Lawrence. Hello, Arno. How's it going? Hi, man. It's going very well. How is it going for you? It's all right. It's all right. I won a game of chess, which yes. is always good news. I saw it in your show. Yes. I mean, I kind of almost <laughs> yeah, go on. was hoping that we were discussing this today, but you uh, ah. discussed all of it in your own weekly show, well, which was that's very true. interesting. It's, uh, it's fun to explore the, the French Yes, uh, like this, and um, yeah, it was it was just uh, very delightful to see how you were basically choking your opponent. <laughs> mm. I mean, mm -hmm. like in a nice way. In a, it's a gentle choking, like just like in a fun, yes. playful way. Yeah, I don't know. How yeah, I, I was really, <laughs> I was really happy with the game. Anybody who's not seen it, go and check out my weekly show, obviously in the archive, where I analyze that. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, the really important thing is that with well, I won that game, which was very important for the team uh, because we only won Indeed. the match by one point. Yes, you were you were the decider. Like, yeah, in many ways, I was the decider, and now that means that against um, who are we playing this weekend? Uh, what's the name of the team? Doesn't matter. But Doesn't it's, matter. But it's happening I, this weekend, and you will play again, or? Yeah, I'm playing on Sunday. I'm coming on Sunday, so um, well, I, I'm coming in and out to Hamburg one yes. day. I'm going to be playing a grandmaster on Sunday for sure. I think we're playing Schwerin. Schwerin. Oh, and Schwerin, beautiful area. Schwerin, yeah. yeah. Very nice lake. Yes. And, uh, yes, and I, they've got a very strong team. And basically, the situation is that our team Nordstedt. I think we need something like three points. So there's an eight man team and I think we need three points in order to qualify for to to go up to the next so, division. So you do not even have to win. We don't even have to win because That's I think we are two points ahead, uh, two match points ahead. And so there's we, a lot of draw handshakes hopefully maybe who knows no but there won't be because they have to because if they they have to try and win basically every game i see that's the point yeah ah you're a po okay 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 yeah 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 they have to try oh. and win every game exciting so and yeah. that's of course, that is of course um yeah something to look forward to um yeah so how was let's just uh, we we get right into the chess news but uh, let me ask you how was it to uh, to play chess over the board again after all those years. You met yeah. your colleagues, you saw your opponent. How did yeah. you shake hands? It was, yeah, it was like a fist bump. Um, so you could actually, in the rules in this league, is that you can take the mask off at the board. Mm -hmm. The windows were open. But when you were walking around, you had to put the mask on. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. basically the, the way it works. Okay. And... Um, it was fine. I mean, the truth is that I've, I I didn't like the idea of playing chess with the mask on, sitting there with the mask on. Mm -hmm. It feels like a real drag to have to do that. But, uh, you know, playing without the mask off was completely fine. It was nice to be back touching the pieces, you know. It's uh, it was it was a cool feeling actually right. to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we, we will have more of this uh, very soon. I mean, yeah, and yeah, you get used to the mask. I had it in February in Malta uh, at one yeah. point. You, yeah, yeah, you just, you had, I had, we had the mask on the whole time, like even when playing. What, you right? mean playing? Wow, yes. yeah. We had windows open and the masks on. So, yeah. But playing with the mask on for me is just so gross. I mean, it feels like it's already tense enough, you know, it feels like you can't breathe and do you know what I mean? It feels Absolutely, like... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess it's difficult for uh, some players, for others not. So this might also affect the gameplay after all. I think I I just made the decision that it doesn't affect me because okay. if it affects me, then I will play worse. Got it. Does that make sense? Anyway, yeah, let's yeah. go to chess. Well, <laughs> it does. No, it does. Here yes, we are. I mean, uh, just... just yeah, well, we're, we're, where are we? What's going on? Talk. Let's talk about There's some chess. Pretty much going on again. So let's start. Shall we start with the young guys? Sure. So we have um, another event with uh, Kramnik, and yes. um, which means all the young superstars yes. are playing. 
did I say all the young superstars? No, because the, uh, the whole Indian field or the like the uh, the strong Indians, which we have praised in the last couple of weeks we so have, many times, yes. meaning Pragnak. Pragnananda, uh, Gukesh, Sarin, they are yep. playing in uh, Riga. They are playing in Riga, yes. So, mm -hmm. and there's also a couple of women who are playing in the European Women's Championship. So it's mm -hmm. not as big as it was in the two prior events, as far as right. I remember. I think it was two before. So yeah. at the moment, um, still, it is a massively brutal, strong field, and uh, our German superstar hope. Vincent Keimer has uh, three and a half out of four at the moment. And he mm -hmm. he got a strong win against Christopher Yu, one of the favorites to maybe win. I wonder Liang, still also the other favorite probably. Uh, well, yeah, but uh, up to Satorov. I've never seen him win a tournament, but he has the high, he's always the highest rated player, right? Abdu Satarov, yeah, yeah, I mean, well, he's he's done very well recently in a bunch of things. Yeah, he's very dangerous. He he could be a really strong player Seriously, one day. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's your, your main man, Mariki, Ma I think, yeah. Mark Andrea? Uh, my, yeah, Mark Andrea, well, he's a grandmaster right now, so he's... Uh, oh, he's no, says no. international master, but I mean, he, he basically got the title. Yes, so right. yeah, he still he he has to get uh, back on track a bit. He only won against uh, Muzin, yeah, but he mm -hmm. lost against Abdu Satorov. And I, I, why do all of those young players? I mean, everybody has like this ridiculously long last names, and then okay, actually, I just well, they're all from. <laughs> I have to dismiss my own words because there is also players like Lei Yu and Liang, and you can very easily uh, give you. Exactly. So what am I? What am I talking about? What are you talking about? No, it's cool. It's cool. So it's either yeah. super small or super long names. Yeah, maybe that's the point. Yeah. No, but I mean, obviously, it's still a fantastic lineup there. You know what I mean? I mean, Truly. it's. It's it's a great lineup, and uh, it's great to see Vincent out in front. Obviously, over twenty six hundred now. Yes, he did um, exactly. Yeah, something to note. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, massive. Uh, and Vincent is very much going to be a part of the future of German chess and the German chess uh, Olympiad team. I I expect that he's going to be part of that team. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, I expect that. He's he's probably going to make the next Olympic. Is he going to make the next? It's going to be close. Maybe they'll bring him as a kind of backup as the board five, you know, because yeah. it's always useful to bring a young guy who, you know, who is uh, obviously extremely talented. It, it's good to have the young dudes, basically. I a absolutely lot. agree. Yeah. So let's give quick predictions uh, yeah. so to, to see how we fail miserably once again. Yeah, um, I would say I wonder Liang because I always think he's. I don't know. I don't. I I've watched a couple of his games. I once also watched an, uh, a video of Ben Feingold mm -hmm. uh, praising him, and I was pretty stunned by how uh, he he used his technique and his tactics to just win over the games, and it felt a bit like uh, yeah. Not, not only like a machine, but a very creative machine. So I wonder Liang is my tip to win. Oh, right. So you think Awanda will win it? Yeah, I mean, Awanda is obviously extremely talented. Um, I don't know Awanda that well. I mean, I've seen his games, obviously. And Awanda's been around for a long time now because, you know, Awanda has, you know, was, was a grandmaster very young. Um, and, you know, he he's been... Yeah, he's been in the public eye for, for quite some time. Um, notable at the moment is Christopher Yu, who's having a very nice tournament. I've always thought Christopher Yu had something very special since I saw him as a kid in Isle of Man about three, four years ago. Um, so he's up there, and Abdu Satarov obviously is up there as well. Notable uh, performances so far by Sadwa Kasova mm -hmm. and Sarah Khadim. Uh, these two young ladies, obviously flying the flag for the for the for the ladies, and of course, very important to point out that you know they they basically have it ten and ten, or they try to have it as much ten and ten in the uh, in this kind of uh, tournament. Yes. So, uh, but actually, there's only sixteen players, right? So they reduce the field, so it's eight and eight. I should eight say. Eight, okay. yeah. Right. Yeah. 
So it's nice to see that. And some names that I don't know. So, for example, this kid Sokolovsky. Uh, yeah. Don't know who he is, basically. Have just no idea who, who this kid is. Um, and yeah, it's true. I I haven't heard of Dagupati. I haven't heard of Sokolovsky. Yeah, and uh, yeah, those those two. So for a person I never heard of, two and a half points and feeder master. That's not bad. Why? Yeah. How did that happen? He won against uh, Shuvalova and yeah, okay, so Sokolovsky. So yeah, let's see. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know Sokolovsky, and there's another Zhu that I don't know from China and Dagupati. Ah, yeah. Dagu I also don't know. Yeah. Uh, B Dagupati. So some nice new names there that obviously that the organizers know a lot better than we do. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just uh, as I say, the whole series. I'm I'm just a huge fan of yes. of what they're doing. Um, you know, making sure that the young talents are also getting a piece of the pie because the big boys really have been spoiled, right? They've had <laughs> the Grand Chess Tour, the Magnus Carlsen Chess Tour, yeah. the live events, right? So the they're gold, not the starving. Yeah, they're absolutely. not starving, right? So it's really nice because the young guys really have basically uh, suffered um during mm. this this pandemic right they just haven't had the opportunities to play good point yep so let's uh, and it's also worth to yep. to mention that um of course well i mean maybe th three four five six years from now these are in the top 10 somewhere at least i i mean that has to happen right one of at least one to two of yeah. those players have to be in the top 10 don't you think well maybe not on this list but if <sighs> we well, I say that, but if we include the guys that aren't there, oh, of course, I, I right. count them in. Pragan, you Pragan count them, Pragan, okay? And the, yeah. Uh, yeah. If we include the Sarin, the Pragnananda, and the whatnot, um, in three to four years, could they be top ten? Yeah, there's a there's certainly a chance that there's some to, top I, ten. I have the feeling, yes. That, yeah, I, yeah. I I can see I can see three Indian players in the top ten. Let's see. I mean, this is what Frederick Friedel is mentioning since a couple of years already, and I think he might be right. I think he might be right. Okay. Yeah. Could Let's be. move on to some, yeah. some more chess. We have much more going on. Do you? By the way, I just uh, I uh, didn't prepare for this. Berlin wins yeah. popular vote. Will host yes. the Grand Prix series. What do you know? Yes. What's that about? I don't know what this is about, only in so far as I know that um, Berlin, right? yeah, the Grand Prix is coming to Berlin, but is it for the, it's just for one event or is it for the entire, yeah, the, oh, the, the, the February, February and April, is it? I see. Okay. So they, they have, it seems as if they have made like a is this just for advertisement or did they have a real campaign here going on with those flyers? I think that's and... just an advertisement, but it looks like February and April. It's going to make, yes, February to April, yeah. Yeah. All right. So that would be great. Obviously, I, I'm here. Uh, and uh, yeah, that would be that would be cool to to be a part of. I don't know exactly what's going on, but clearly the, what's really important about this is the Grand Prix series is another avenue to the um, to the candidates, right? That's the important thing yes. to point out, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, let's, that's going to be interesting. Yes. Let's move on. Um, yes. Did you, did you I just don't want to take away uh, the things you have to taken a look yeah. at? No, no, you just go because I've looked at everything pretty much. It's been a bit of Same a quiet here. week. It's a quiet week. It's not the, it's not the, yeah. The St. Louis Rapid and Blitz, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So who's that guy with the pineapples on his? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh, he's, had a, he's had a haircut, huh? Also, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Look, and he's playing with the mask on. So where is yes. your excuse? That's no, right. I'm just kidding. But yeah. Um, yeah, of course, once again, a super strong field. Um, yeah. Yeah, Nakamura was in the middle of the table after the second day he moved uh, to the top lane and Shankland keeps up yeah. with his great form interestingly enough. Yeah, Sam is still there. Mm -hmm. Uh obviously coming off the back of that wonderful result that he had. Oh. Um and yeah, I mean he's uh you know, he's having a, he's having a great year. 
Um, so great performance yeah. at the World Cup. Uh, Fabiano, though, let's talk about Fabiano because let's talk about him. I tell you what, it's been a long time since we've all spoken about Fabiano Caruana. It feels as though Fabi has not been even close to fifth gear for a while. Yeah, what feels like a very, 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 very long time. Mm -hmm. okay. mm. Just, just, just a, an insanely long time. He dropped under 2,800 in classical chess. The World Cup was obviously a very, very, very bad event for him, yep. losing very early on. He didn't really participate in a lot of the online events. So he's kind of been a bit on the back burner. And obviously, as somebody who's very close to Fabi, I worked with him for a few years. I'm, I'm very yes. close with him on a personal level. I really want to see him get back to where he belongs, which is challenging at the very, very top. It would be really nice to see him win this event. Mm. I would really, really, really like to see him uh, win this event. Okay, so this is also your prediction or is it more a hope? It's, you know what, I'll go with prediction because I think he's due a win. Great. When was the last time Fabi won a tournament? Yeah, it's been a bit. Oof. I mean, I can't even remember the last time he won a tournament. But he has very strong opponents in the in the last part. Look, it's uh, it's Nakamura, it's uh, Rapport, and Mamed Yarov. That's some beasts. I mean, all of them are beasts, but there are some massive beasts, right? Yes, I mean for sure. Mm. Um, I my my prediction is Rapport. First of all, I'm a huge. You think fan Rapport's going to win the tournament? I'm I'm a huge huge fan of him. I think he's massively good in rapid games. I I don't even know why there's so many draws. Normally he's a decisive player. Yeah. Um, I think he can win at least two more games and draw one, and uh, that mm, yeah, it could could be eight, ten, eleven points. Not sure if that's enough, but if these are all draws here, maybe it is I think enough. You can, you can, maybe he he enough. can squeeze through. I mean, Rapport as well is another guy that's been under the radar for a long time. You know what? He hasn't he hasn't been getting the invitations to these big tournaments. And that I do not understand. Uh, yeah, at me all. neither. Because he's a very entertaining player. He's yes. young. Uh, he's actually still extremely highly rated. So it's it's extremely strange to me. Yeah, there was, uh, there is something and. I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah. it must be, yeah, it must be something. And uh, people are wondering, I mean, we're not the only ones. We're speaking sure. of something openly here. That, yeah. Um, also, he's just like this, uh, he's, I, if I've watched a couple of interviews with him and he's just, uh, he's so humble and nice. And uh, uh, I, I think there's one thing which he clearly mentioned in one of his interviews that he is, he doesn't like to play chess that much. Oh, really? Just, he said yes, that? I think, if wow. I'm, I don't quote, maybe I'm paraphrasing it, but I think he slipped into this and he is just very good with this, but I, really? I'm not sure if he, I, I, I think it was that he didn't enjoy it that much. And of course, wow. I think that is, that is difficult if, if that is the case. If I'm wrong, uh, I'll take that back, but I, I, I have the feeling I remember it was a bit like that. I wonder how many people um, <laughs> are are like uh, like professional chess players, and they are just like, oh god, I hate chess. But what well, to do? It's my passion. It's my. Do you think it's a lot? Yeah, loads. Absolutely, loads of people are like that. Um, wow. You're speaking to one. <laughs> you're speaking to one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay, I'm not a professional player, but. but no, chess I mean, is no, part of your point. profession. I mean, it's field. it's that same old story of. You no, know, what do you do if you're a 2,500 grandmaster, right? And um, you go from tournament to tournament. You can't really get any better. Your your ceiling is 2,550. You hop from tournament to tournament, club game to club game, playing professionally. Uh, it's a horrible existence. I know a lot of players, English grandmasters, foreign grandmasters, who go to these little Swiss open tournaments, try and eke out a few hundred here or there, mm -hmm. try and eke out, you know, it's, it's not a beautiful life. It's not glamorous. Um, oh. And so there's those people that really don't like chess. And then there's other people who, 
you know, a strong, maybe like Rapport, who just says, you know, I'm just a bit tired of chess. I'm just a mm-hmm. bit, I'm just a bit tired of it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's understandable. Totally. Absolutely. Yes. When your passion turns into your job, right? When your love, what used to be a love turns into your job, uh, things get a bit, you know, um, what's the word? Uh, well, that's helpful. Let's say it like that. If the yeah. passion is your job, if you think you really, really enjoy doing, that is your job. Yeah, but it is not that easy. It's so easily said, right? You's, there's this famous quote, which is just so overrated and overused. Which and, one? From, from Pixar Studios. If you love what you're doing, you do not have a job and something like this. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just non. I mean, great. yeah, it's just, yeah, if you, <laughs> if, you, if you love what you're doing, it's not really a job. Yeah. I mean. I, there is some truth to it, but... Uh, I, I I think I'm going more for a quote from uh, Seth Godin is that it is probably very, very good if you um, don't love what you're doing, but you no wait a second, if you're not uh, doing what you love, but if you love what you're doing. And that is the distinction and that is uh-huh. which requires a bit of willpower, of course, but I think it turns out well if you can get this little decisive thing under control. The only example I really uh, know so far from the chess players I have met is uh, the ra- when I had the rapid interview with Irina Crush. Yeah. She she couldn't stop. She she uh, we were playing the rapid game while we have the interview and she was analyzing and even after the show we were still analyzing and she had so it was so truly and honestly uh, her love to chess and her passion yeah. about it. Well, that is lucky. That is really lucky. You can I mean, really people, feel it. People still love chess. I mean, you know, these guys, the rapports and whatever, they still love chess. Yeah. The problem is that the pressure of being a professional, um, especially at the top levels as well, and being on that cusp, you know, where you can't get the invites and whatnot. Hmm. Um, yeah, it can be a bit of an, it can be a bit of a, if you're a golfer, okay, if you play golf and you're number 300 in the world, you can make millions a year and have a comfortable life. This is the point. Maybe not million. I don't know. I don't know what the 300. I, what, I, what, I, I will just pick my golf club and I'm off right now. <laughs> I mean, but basically the point is it's it's a struggle in chess still for very, very talented chess players. And um Probably you football can't. player is the word you were looking for. Maybe. Oh, I mean, I think golfers earn golfers pro too? Rata, but, Well, I think golfers must earn more than football players. I think the three hundred. <laughs> I think the three hundredth best golfer earns much more than the three hundredth best footballer in the world. That's a little bit of that's, research. Let's see if the claim I would have on that. To fact check. Yeah, you can fact check that <laughs> for sure. I mean, golfers earn a foot because they can win a tournament randomly for for 1 million, 2 million or whatever, and a 300th best footballer, 30 clubs, what's he going to earn? Oh, maybe, maybe I'm a bit wrong I, there. I, I don't know. I beg your pardon? Okay, anyway. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah. Yeah, Um, but I wonder if there, has there ever been a hybrid of uh, golf and chess? <laughs> I don't know about that. Okay. Well, hybrid of golf and chess good. feels like a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a stretch. A bit too stretchy, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So what else do we have? Um, well, we have this Riga? RTU. Yeah, we have this RTU tournament, this Riga. Latest? Yeah. yeah, this one is the latest one. Yeah, yeah. this is an interesting one, of course. Mm-hmm. So, and of course, we have the Women's European Championship. We will get to Yeah, that we'll have a look at this. that as well. So yeah. here are all the little stars again, the <laughs> Indian elite. Yes. Um, Niha Erigaisi. Narayanan, not, that's not, the name not Narayanan. I do not know yet. Yeah, and uh, and there's another Abhimanyu, which I also yeah. didn't know yet. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So it just keeps on going. It keeps on uh, getting. Well, yeah, the, the story hasn't changed. We've spoken about this already on yeah. the show. Uh, the Indians are just dominating pretty much every single tournament. Look how many Indians are in the top. 20 there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the top 20 Massive. are Indian. And 
Um, hey, look at that. No. What the heck? How did he get there? I mean, well, okay, this we've is got some 20, well, some 2192 guy has also done well. He's oh. probably, he must have beaten somebody. Carried by the crowd. Go, go. <laughs> yeah, he must have beaten somebody pretty good. Yes. Um, but, you know, all, you know, all your top guys. So you've got Eregas, Naranian, Puranic all on three. Sarin is on three, mm -hmm. uh, all leading the tournament. So... Uh, some other names there are very interesting. We've got Velimir Ivic. Now, does that name sound familiar? Yes, it does, okay. because we were uh, very recently talking about him, or you were actually mentioning Maybe, that he was yes. astounding in the World Cup. He was unbelievable yeah. in the World And there so, he is again. So this yeah. is somebody to keep an eye on, maybe, yeah. Yeah, so Velimir Ivic... Uh, Maybe I have to find there... out a bit more about him. He's a grandmaster already, and he's under 20, and he's almost 2,600. Probably he's touching the 2,6 yeah. very, very soon. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, he uh, he basically had this amazing run in the World Cup. He's I think he was World Under-18 champion. Completely, like, not on the radar, but now he's really on the radar, and he plays some really beautiful chess. So he's there. Uh, you know, you've got a guy here, Kalyan Arjun, under 20, rated 2503. Just another Indian who's going to be a grandmaster soon, no question. I cannot see. Just oh, below no, they, 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 yeah. Kalyan Arjun, yeah. yeah. Like, again, no idea who he is. He's yes. just another one of the of the factory that they're producing. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's they, they, they could, if they continue, I don't know another country producing the level of talent that India is producing and young talent. And it's very, very scary because uh, if they continue, they could just end up completely dominating chess for for, for decades. There was, I mean, a, there was another country which was dominating chess for a while, yeah? So it can happen, right? It's yeah, I mean, they were dominating chess for a few decades, but now things have opened up. But I don't, I, the point is, I don't see, even China is just not producing the level. Yes, you, this is a thing which uh, people normally, or like a couple of years ago, were saying like, ah, oh, it's going to be China who is actually uh, will. There was this time, and I'm not sure if it was like 10 or 8 or 6 years ago, where China's uh, top players were definitely all far over 2,700. Mm -hmm. And then they were very strong in the Olympiads, and they were just like also very precise in their gameplay. So that was like, wow, wh where does it stop? But actually, it stopped a bit. It stopped. Yeah, it has it has it has stopped ever so slightly. That's true. Also, yeah. let me point out, please, uh, Ralph Akeson. So, if you only yes. think like, okay, these are the young guns, and they're all, and then there's like Elias Mirin. We know him since a long time. We've heard this name. He's a, just a strong grandmaster. He had two thousand seven hundred two, I think, at one point. Yeah, he did. Yeah, Ilya so did, yeah. and then there's Ralph Akeson at the moment, two point yeah. five. Uh, so he's definitely over 60 and uh well what do you think about um is it ever too late to start playing chess is there an age where you say like come on just don't even bother or do you think it can never ever be too late even if you're 60 70 80 if you just start playing chess and have that at a hobby what's um, your thought I of it I, you know, Ralph Ackerson was uh, an incredibly strong junior, actually. He was often battling it out with uh, Gary Kasparov in the World Junior Championships years ago. Uh, the fact that he's still playing is obviously beautiful. It's wonderful. Um, and, uh, you know, um, he's having a good tournament. He, you can see that he's a senior, so he's, he's over 60 years old now. Uh, yeah, and absolutely you can enjoy chess later on. I mean, why not? I mean, chess is to be enjoyed at all ages. There are some absolute classic players who have been, you know, uh, extremely uh, successful later on in life. Of course, the main uh, name that comes to mind is Victor Korchnoi, mm -hmm. who, you know, has done incredibly well. Yeah, true. Yeah, he um, was at, at the, he started like, being really, really strong again at the age of 60, I think. Like he had this second summer of his life or something. Yeah. Where he was also reaching the 2000s, touching it. I didn't think he reached it again, yeah. but he was like really so close before. Crazy. 
crazy. Yeah, I mean, he to to, to get to where he he got to is is just unbelievable at that mm. age. Mm. I mean, truly, it's unbelievable. So yeah, absolutely. If if you're slightly older watching this show, guys, uh, and you want to, there's absolutely no reason, and you can improve. I I don't believe in these myths of. Yeah, this you're not able to improve. And this what? was exactly the question uh, I want. Yeah, so it was stupid to say, like, should is it good to start at the age of 60, 70, 80? Clearly, yes, of course. It's also good for the brain, no doubt. But the, the question, the main question uh, was, like, do you think there is, like, depth? Do you have a limit when you start at a certain age and then you, you just cannot get over a certain level? I do not think so either. I think if there is no. enough uh, time, passion, and all of this, then you can actually you can get to a really high rating too. I I mean, there's enough examples too in life as, as well, of course. It yeah. is more difficult, probably, right? I mean, yeah, it's the same. Uh, like yeah, training to get like a, a <laughs> good body or so. It's not yes. too likely, but yeah, there's there's certainly no limits in in all of this. Great. Yeah. So here, uh, prediction. <laughs> Let's we have one more prediction. I'm just going to go with Sarin because he won a tournament the other week. Um, he's on fire. He's winning every single <laughs> game of chess he ever plays. So I'm just going to go Sarin. Um, and yeah. uh, you know, uh, I yeah. think you know he's he's just incredibly. I mean, he'll be 2700 very very soon, which is already quite scary to think about. Actually, um, yeah. Sarin's Sarin a good choice. We'll go Sarin. We'll go Sarin. Where's Where's Pragatnanda? He's somewhere a bit below, I believe. Anyway, well, okay, you go for Sarin. I go for Kovalenko. Kovalenko, no chance. Well, I say that. That's that's horrible to say. <laughs> that's horrible to say. He hasn't got no chance. But Igor, he's just uh, he's, he's he's very. You know what? He's very beatable. I say this from experience. I've played him online and beaten him quite badly, and I just feel as though Igor is. I, I yeah, he's already half behind, which doesn't look like much, but actually, I think it can be decisive in a tournament yeah, like that. Right? Yeah, so, exactly. how old is he, by the way? Do you know? Valenko is going yeah. to be like probably a few years younger than me, thirty or something like this. Yeah. I would no, no. say. I think he can. I, I think he can make it. Okay, let's see. Okay, all right. We, we will see about this. It's we'll still going on for a couple of days. Fifteenth, uh, yeah. So yeah, two two more days only. Oh, uh, all right. And then we oh yeah let's let's quickly move on to this quickly yeah uh, let's quickly do okay so I heard uh, Jorge yes. Corey since a while and okay. uh, of course the reason is because he is also uh, he's I think he is the best rated South American chess player could it be ah uh, yeah it could be I'm not completely I mean, sure. That. Dom Dominguez uh, is in the U.S. since a while, so he was yeah uh, he was up there all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think uh, Jorge Cori is the best rated player in the South America, and not only since yesterday's, because I think he is up there since a couple of years already. And, probably, yeah. And probably. not only that, he also has a very very strong sister. Um, he does yeah, he also does yeah. At over two thousand four hundred something, I think. So he is yeah, Daisy, Daisy. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, fist bump. Yeah, yeah, and he just um, he he won the tournament. I don't see how with how many points though at the moment. Uh, oh, let's quickly check here. Yeah, he won with seven and a half. Yeah, he crushed it basically. He completely crushed it. Yeah, so he won. Um, yeah, he probably just drew the last game in confidence yeah. yeah yeah well and then there's another good player um Cristobal Henriquez yeah from yes. Chile yeah yeah, mm -hmm. he yeah he's very good just out of interest if you guys are, are well if you're interested here Juan Carlos Obregón is my is a is somebody I would say is a buddy I've played him a few times when I used to play in Cuba now living in Mexico, a lot of Cuban grandmasters go to Mexico to live because they uh -huh. have better opportunity. Things are very difficult right now in Cuba. Uh -huh. And Obregón is uh, is a very, very good player. Okay. A very, 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 very good player. And yeah, 
Uh, I also know Pablo Tapi, the Free Free Day Master, when I used to live in Mexico, used to hang out with him. And also Uriel Capo used to hang out with these guys, go for a, you know, una, una jarita, a little, little, you know, beer afterwards. Yeah. When I, did you just say when I lived in Mexico? I lived in Mexico in 2009. It was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, the good. The heck? Time. Yeah, good, great times. Great times. Wow. Fantastic times yeah and um pablo and uriel were kind of friends i haven't i've lost touch with them that's true actually but now to no, catch no. up no. yeah time to catch up but yeah, well done to jorge sandra Mareco. quick mention to him as well sandra obviously a very 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 strong player okay. in his own right um and uh came second but yeah jorge with the win were nicely done yeah, so I wonder also, um, because I didn't see him in all those super, super tournaments too, but he is definitely, yeah. he has the strength. I would like to see him compete against the 2700 Elite more often. He's just in that weird space of being extremely good, but hasn't shown enough to play the 2700 yeah. boys on a regular basis. Also, unfortunately... Okay. No, I don't think so. Also, there is another big unfortunate thing, which is that his location doesn't help. Yes, that Being based in, help. in South America, I think he is. He might actually, I, unless they move to Spain, because I know a lot oh. of the top players move. For example, Pichot? It, it, Pichot, I think, still lives in Argentina. Because he's been there in the elite tournaments a couple of times now, and then you would yeah, yeah, say yeah. Like it applies too, right? He's but also he comes away. over... But I can I, the one I know for sure is Eduardo Tirusaga. Okay, Eduardo uh -huh, yeah. has is now has moved to Spain with his wife. He's he's now dad, so he's enjoying dad life. But he now officially plays for Spain. Okay. So a lot of these guys do come over because obviously uh, it's just very hard, to, especially in places like Venezuela, where economically things are very very of tough. Course. Of you course, know? of course. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, I'm learning a new thing every week. Uh, there we you go. Lived in Mexico, I did. did yeah, did what you, a time! Did you guys at home knew this before? Well, I think people who know me might probably, have known. Probably, yeah. yes. I'm, I don't know you well enough, but just nice because I'm always learning something new like that. <laughs> That's very sweet of you, Arne. <laughs> so let me quickly, like, where the heck is uh, the women's uh, Euro? Um, Maybe it's it's one page beneath the heck. Okay, let's take a look at the German page because they have it there. The the women e uh, Europe European Championship. Um, because yeah, I think that's very interesting. Also, of course, the women's Europe. Yeah, we yeah. can look at that. For sure. I I yeah. Well, sorry, I'm just. Uh, jumping over to i was actually uh, i don't know what uh, what happened but um yeah i i'm enjoying watching this um and it's always interesting to see yeah well we've i've known most of those players now from the world cup mm -hmm. and so it's about us for again to to give a nice prediction of who mm -hmm. will win this tournament here right Look at, I mean, this is, uh, it's a very, very strong field. Jeez. Mm -hmm. So Very strong. Yeah, I, I, I have to say, I haven't really been keeping my eye on it that much, unfortunately. Yeah, that's okay. Um, <laughs> so I, I can't say for sure. Okay, okay. Um, but uh, of the girls that I know, or the women that I know there, uh, Nino Batsiashvili, very, very strong. Uh, very, very experienced from Georgia, Olga Gear. Yeah. Look, look at the Georgian elite here. Set yeah. on place one, set on place two. Yeah. Set on place seven, set on place three. Like Georgia is rocking it. I would really be surprised if not uh, Georgian would win the tournament. But saying, having that said that, there's yeah. Irina Bulmagas, the. Uh, whole leader at the yeah she is completely yeah. four points rocked four out of four i think yeah she's she's obviously having Massive. a good tournament um and she is 
uh, you know, uh, very, very talented player. Has she got enough to win it? I would say not. I don't think she's got the staying power. Mm. I don't know Irina that well, to be fair. It's maybe a little bit harsh what I'm saying. But yeah, and there are some names there that I just simply don't know. For example, this young girl, Malts Maltsevskaya, no idea who she is. Yes. Moni yes. Monica Rosman, no idea. Uh, you've got some very experienced players there. Elena Danielen, who's who's you know been around the block. I mean, she's she's been playing elite women's chess for years now. Monica Sochko, extremely experienced. Olga Giria, Bela Kontanashvili, Nino is there as well. Uh, you've got players like um, Demante, uh, who is there. You've got Josephine Heinemann, rocking yes. rocking for the uh, the Germans. For the Germans. The Germans, yeah, and she's doing Germans. quite quite well. I think she lost yeah. the last game, unfortunately. Yeah, there's a couple of Germans, uh, Lara Schulze too, and um, yeah. yeah, let's uh, let's see how how this will turn out. So, yeah, you you would say you would go for uh, Nino Batschev. Nino, I like um, Laura Unuk is a very talented young player. She's a friend of mine, Laura. I think she she could do something. Maybe one of these. Also, Gunai Mamad Zada is yeah. a very very talented young player. Very Gunai, yeah. Gunai might just do it as yeah, well. Yeah, I would say too. Let's let's see. We will. Let's we're see. always wrong with our predictions. So let's see we'll, where <laughs> where this will take us. Yeah, and not to extend the show too much. We already have uh, covered a lot of the yeah mm -hmm. those four main tournaments. After all, by the way, have you have you ever played in Riga? Yeah, I've not. I've been to Riga. I've never pl played in Riga. I would love to. I would love to. Uh, I mean, playing this RTU tournament has always been uh, quite quite a dream of mine, but uh, I've not been able to do it. Yeah. Okay. Well, soon yeah. enough it will be. Now, this is worth mentioning too, obviously, because uh, Karsten Müller, our endgame god, had uh, the last show set up with um, the youngest grandmaster in the world, mm -hmm. uh, Mishra Abimanyu, and. Um, so uh, he was here, of course, Carsten, mm -hmm. and I was talking with him about the show a little bit. And uh, so first of all, this is he said like this was really, really a strong show uh, mm -hmm. uh, because his endgame knowledge is uh, extraordinary good. And they had some training after the show, some mm -hmm. uh, and so I asked him like, and what do you think? And Carsten just did this motion like unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, like, do you, is this like, a, would you think that he will become one of the greatest chess players in the world? And he said, yeah, that's hard to tell because it yeah. has, there's so many factors, of course. I mean, yeah, but he, uh, he, um, from what he has seen so far and uh, the training with him, um, he can become one, one very, very, very uh, great chess player if he is not already yet. So, yeah. Worth, well, worth I, checking I, out I, the show. I fully believe that. Mm -hmm. You know, Abimanyu is just an extremely talented young guy, and working on his ending endings like he is already is only going to serve him very well in That's the future. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, it is still one of those important forces in chess. The very last thing, which is something which looks just yes. so cool, is this uh, yes. chess event in Trafalgar Square. I yes. think it will happen in other countries too. Look yes. at all of this. It's so crazy. Look, look that's us here. In, yes. In the pool. Now at the chess board. It's insane, no? Um, um, lovely. Yeah, it's absolutely lovely, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, playing uh, playing in Trafalgar Square, there's Malcolm Payne, obviously, the good buddy of mine. Woody Harrelson was there as well. They really <laughs> made a big deal out of this. I was invited to it. Huh. Um, they had a lot of events on the day, obviously celebrating chess, kids and whatnot. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go, obviously. Um, but, uh, yeah, and then we had this big, uh, this big game between Tani and Shreyas Royale. Shreyas yeah. is probably our best young player he's already over 2300 uh and he actually lost to to tani who who won the first game uh, who's obviously you know one of the the big talents coming out of uh well i say big talent how can i put this he's not he's not a gm he's sort of 11 or 12 and probably around 2200 2300 yeah. but clearly because of his story he's he, you know he's he's very nice to 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 follow uh so yeah 
Yeah, and I highly recommend, by the way, uh, if you haven't done this yet at home, uh, check out this game. It's a back and forth, and it's uh, mm -hmm. very... It's so hard to tell who's better here and there. It just switches uh, all the time. It's a very crazy, interesting game, especially mm -hmm. in the end part. It goes... Uh, into the juice here it's yeah like this is very a nice, interesting move. nice move rookie three uh, yeah very nice move yeah Crazy. agreed okie dokie yeah so um uh, wait that's wrong that's right that's that's it for the chess week this week we've mm -hmm. uh that was some some nice uh, going around in all the chess directions with all the different things uh, as you already know, we will have a little break of two weeks for the next two weeks. So we will see each other uh, latest in September again. Um, do you have to get uh, Lawrence DVDs? Uh, I just recently again checked out your Alvin's uh, Counter Gambi because yeah. I just can't get enough of it. And uh, also check out his weekly show. The, Please the game, do, yeah. the game uh, is, is very informative, very, very much learned. Thanks for the shout out to me, too. I heard my name a couple of times. <laughs> and um, You're welcome. yeah, all of you guys at home, thanks for uh, encouraging us and giving nice comments and uh, sending us emails about uh, that you like the show. We, we actually had like uh, some some bigger uh, numbers watching the show. So we appreciate this a lot. Thanks for doing this. And I hope you enjoy this as much as we do and uh, we will keep on with this of course in september all of you stay safe have a lovely weekend and you lawrence you have to win this game right i have to win on saturday yeah uh, on sunday i should say so i'll, I'll let everybody know maybe uh, easiest is probably to follow me on twitter at lawrence john i am and then i'll probably announce it there so yes. please do Follow me there and fingers crossed we win and our team goes to the northern division of the Bundesliga. Unless or, uh, you're from Schwerin, of course. <laughs> yeah, unless you're from Schwerin, in which case you want you want them to win. But uh, come on the Nordstedt. Let's yeah, go. Come on. Let's just jump on that train. Okay, guys. See bye you later. Bye. Take care. Bye bye.